graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. I learned something very important today, and it just dawned on me. I want to talk about faith. Right on. It's not about whether something is true, or, or, or based in fact, or, or reality, or the laws of physics, or nature, or, or even basic common sense. It's about whether or not we're dumb enough to believe in it that matters. Oh, folks, who the hell am I to say that there is no God? Who am I? Or to say that anybody's belief in the church doesn't make their life better. Maybe it does. Or that this man, Dr. Jakes, who am I to say that he can't cure diseases with his sorcery? I don't know. I say maybe he can. And I believe that maybe he can. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we believe... If we just believe, then we can do anything. Oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I feel it now. Do you feel it? Do you feel the spirit? Do you feel the invisible things around you that don't really exist? Oh, it doesn't matter. I feel yeah. I feel good. We feel magnificent. Yeah. And we can cure cancer with plants. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Dennis, that was amazing, dude. I'm so proud of you. You are feeling again. No. I meant none of it. Your podcast will yes, fail. fail. Yeah, it's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show, and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey, man, this is Kevin Smith. Guy makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Cologne and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello, and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And according to Facebook, Paul and I have been friends for six years. Feels like it's been longer than it feels like it's been a little longer than that. But I think you know when it's like your when you're when you become we've known each other longer. But I think you know as Facebook goes by uh, when you actually like make the person your friend. It was like happy friendship anniversary. And I was like, there's this asshole. <laughs> yep. You're posting all these positive memes and like self empowering memes and memes and I'm like this fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're over there trying to fap. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, I got to do what's got to do, what a dude's got to do. And May was, I don't know if I mentioned this, I think I might have mentioned this in the past episode. May is Masturbation Month, and we're recording this on the 31st. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> May is Masturbation Month. Um, and then, uh, well, there was a challenge. It was like the 31-day challenge, like to jerk off every day. Which I think I can do now that I'm getting a little older. Um, uh, <laughs> I have to take my iron supplements, <laughs> and I'm being very fucking real with you. Like you know, as you get a little older, like I think you don't even want to see what I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah, probably have your head in your fucking hands. Yes, no, I do. Because <laughs> at my not my last job, but when I was working at the place that was handling like the federal loans, uh, there was a day where uh, they had a, a blood drive bus come in and so the woman went to take my my blood or whatever and she said you know your iron is really really low and when it's that low uh you know we don't we don't take the blood from you so i was like oh shit okay so uh i i take iron supplements and it's weird because like you know usually people who have, who have low iron in their blood they're like you know they're cold all the time and 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 you know they're anemic and shit like like i'm not anemic i mean i'm not like pale pale uh, I don't, you know, I'm not cold all the time. I mean, maybe because I'm a fat fuck, you but I'm, you know, pale bastard. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm pale because I don't go outside, but that's not, you know, I'm not, you know, usually people have low, people have like wait, wait, wait. deficiencies. Do you go outside? Absolutely not. Do you <laughs> I don't know fucking exactly. necessary. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do take, and, and don't get me wrong, I forget all the time, but I do take like an iron supplement, you know, ever since my surgery, you know, ever since I had the, the, uh, the gastric bypass. You know, I, I don't, my body doesn't like absorb vitamins the way normal people do. So I have, like, 
even when I had the surgery and I was back in 2006, even after the surgery, the doctor says, you know, you have to take a multivitamin every day for the rest of your life. And I was like, all right, you know, and fucking you know, now you go to fucking Walmart and buy, you know, a 300 bottle, you know, 300. Uh, oh, my fucking phone. You could buy like a three hundred dollar, three hundred dollar. You could buy a three hundred pill count, you know, for like eight bucks. So go know. to your room, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah. So I and I notice that on the days that I may have, I may forget to take my iron, <laughs> are the days I may not want to fap. <laughs> I don't. Oh, it could God. be a totally psychological thing. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> You're just, gonna, you're just gonna give Oscar like anything <laughs> that he wants to do right now, like seriously. Oh, and, yeah, and, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up because we do have some Oscar letters. Uh, oh he, shit! He wrote in twice, I, and you could tell like they were like literally because the last episode we put out was pretty long, so like they're like they're they're like half an hour apart. The two letters he sent. All right. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did did he like get pissed that you uh, made fun of him? He did, and that's that's the second letter. So that's uh, <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes. Well, he did, but uh, Wait, I want to hear it now. Fuck it, let's do no, it. No, no, no. I want to save it. Okay. Let's let's get the the first one out of the way. Um, so we were talking about. Don't uh, tease me. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about um people who pull out their their phones in the theaters, and it, it's funny that it's fresh in my fucking mind because just last fucking night I went to go see. Godzilla in IMAX opening fucking night, the Thursday night. So once again, and this is, it's so funny because I, I swear to God, I'm not, this is not a bit. I'm not doing this just for like the entertainment of our fans. This is a legit fucking gripe that I have that I went to go see Godzilla in IMAX the night it fucking opened. It. Okay. Maybe not the seven o'clock show because, you know, I was still like, well, I wasn't working at seven o'clock, but you know, after work, you want to just rest a little bit. The 10 o'clock show. And the fucking guy in front of me must have pulled out his phone like eight fucking times. And, you know, uh, not casting any kind of dispersions or stereotypes. He was an Asian gentleman. And, like, once again, he was literally sitting, like, right in front of me. And it's obviously, like, he must have been, like, chatting with his girlfriend or whatever. Because it was one of, like, it was like those, you could see the bubbles. You could see, like, the face of the girl, you know, like, who he's chatting with or whatever. Like, you know, as the conversation goes by. And she was, like, a cute right. chick. And she's, you know, probably, like, you know... You know, the Asian guys, you know, stereotypically going out to see, go see a Godzilla movie, uh, the day it comes out. And like, you know, and they were like chatting back and forth. And he kept like pulling his fucking phone out. And like, you know, I mean, it bothered me. And it was just, and once again, it's just, it, dude, you're seeing a fucking movie opening night. And, and you're pulling out your fucking phone. And, and it was so fucking, uh, disturbing and, and pissed me off. And, you know, and I was just like, it would distract me, but then he put it away. You know, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's going to be the last time I have. And it happens again. But he put it away. But like, I'm like, if he pulls it out one more time, I'm going to say something. But then, like, he put it away, you know, like, he typed something real quick, you know, and, and then, like, put it away. And I'm like, I can't fucking say anything because he already put it away. All right, so, and then uh, the last episode, uh, when we had, uh, and the last episode, uh, to all our new listeners, welcome to the new listeners. We got a, a fairly decent amount of downloads from the last podcast. Um so to any of the new listeners, uh, the last episode, uh, was, you know, was, was called Strangers Assemble. We had, uh, pretty much almost everybody that was ever involved with the, the podcast as a co-host over the past seven years that we've been on the air. And, uh, Jen was talking about how she'll take out her phone during the movie. So Oscar writes, please, Jen, it's called a watch. She's going on and on about why she needs her phone. She mentioned someplace that, uh, she requested that they put clocks uh, because she needs to know the time. And then in all caps, she, he writes, Jen, it's called a watch. <laughs> Pretty nifty invention. Check it out. So, you know, I guess, and, you know, and, you know, and once again, I, it's not like Jen's like a rude person, like, yeah, I'm going to pull out my phone or whatever. But, and that's another thing. Like, also in a the theater, there was a guy like checking his Apple watch or, you know, one of his, his Android watch, because you could tell, like, he was, he was pulling out his watch. But once again, when you're in a dark theater, yes, okay, the IMAX is the big bright screen or whatever, but when you're in a dark theater, you know, you want to focus straight forward. And then, you know, the asshole way a couple rows ahead of me, you know, is checking his phone to see whatever his messages. And it's like, you know, if your life is that fucking important, then maybe you shouldn't go see a movie at the opening night, you know. Go see it when there's less people in the theater. And okay, so now let's get to uh the second letter. You still there, Paul? I'm always here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, once again, for new listeners of the show, Oscar is a long-term contributor 
uh, for the past couple of years. It just turns out he just <laughs> he might not be anymore. <laughs> well, uh, you know, he goes and 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 he's kind of fallen off. He hasn't. He used to write all the time. Now he's kind of, and I think he just wrote just because we we kind of uh, we ragged on we him. ragged on him. Uh, you know, he, he likes to insult me and, and insult my life and everything, and that's all fine and good. Go right ahead. That's you know, you do the podcast. That's what happens. That's part of the being in the spotlight or whatever. Um, so I had found through the through the magic of the internet, uh, accidentally, but it was a it was a wonderful find. Uh, him singing Madonna's Borderline. So feel free if, if this is your first episode, feel free to go back to our last episode and see this guy who's been harassing me for years. And through the magic of the internet, I found you know big tough guy singing fucking Madonna's Borderline. So he writes in response, uh, Chris. And, and the topic of the subject of the email is Smuel, which is the name of the, the app, S M U L E. Yeah. Uh, Chris, epic fail is all I have to say. You had this great buildup, commercial break and segue for nothing. Sorry, your attempt to jab at me was a big fat flop. Hugs and kisses, Oscar. <laughs> so basically, you did write and he doesn't want to admit to it. I think <laughs> the anger that's coming through, you know. It might have. I think I might have struck a nerve. So you know, once again, a guy who's been harassing us for years. I found him singing "Borderline" very badly, mind you. And don't get me wrong. Look, I'll tell you right now, my smules are bad. You know, I share them all the time on my Facebook page. Um, That's why he needs to get laid. <laughs> but it's not like you know. I'm doing like you know. I'm doing like Metallica and, and Drowning Pool and and you know more rocker style bands. You mean? Get laid. Oh yeah, well, okay. Uh, yes, I do have to get laid, but that's you know, <laughs> I'm working on. You it. you you really need to get laid. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like I, I'm almost to the point where I'm just like, maybe I'll get you. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how far it's gone. Look, like, I'm still on the dating sites, and I still look and stuff like that. It's just uh, no one has you know. If I'm gonna get if I'm gonna bring somebody into my and of course like I know you're saying uh, just find somebody you know. You know, entertain the bullshit for a couple of dates and then just fucking and call it a day. And I don't want to fuck with anybody's time like that. You know, yeah, I could look, dude. If if I wanted to get with like a fat mother of two who's like in her mid forties, uh, yeah. you know, I ha- I have my fucking pick, especially ones that live out in fucking the suburbs of Rochester. I, dude, I'd be swimming in fat chicks if that's what I wanted. You know, and not that I'm and and look, look, I'm a fat guy. I'm not pointing. I'm not casting any kind of dispersions i'm just saying and not that i'm looking for a skinny chick but i mean as in you know you see these girls and they look uncomfortable in their and their you know they you know look i'm fat but i think i take okay pictures you know like i I look confident in my pictures i think i have a nice smile i think i'm a good looking guy yes i'm a fat fuck when you see pictures of someone and they look if you can't even take a picture of yourself a a selfie your phone could take three thousand fucking photos you can't find one good one or one where you look confident and happy and secure you know and and don't be wrong i'm pretty sure these women are wonderful wonderful people and they're caring mothers and they're hard workers but you know like it doesn't it doesn't get my motor running you know, and, and watch, I'll, I'll probably start end up dating girls like some fat chick with two kids and <laughs> lives in the suburbs. Oh, I'm going to fuck, I'm going to fuck that. And then like, <laughs> she'll be listening to this podcast like, oh yeah, you do a podcast. Uh, whatever you do, don't listen to episode 291. Uh, so. <laughs> and then they're going to listen to 291. <laughs> and you know, and, uh, oh, you know, but you know what's going to happen? I'm going to, you know, you know what's going to happen? I, like they always say, you, you always find someone when you're not looking. I'll find someone and it'll be a girl who says, I don't want you to do the podcast anymore. It'll be a girl who says, you know, like, you know, why, why you go to fucking Comic Con? That shit is stupid. You know. Uh, I mean, I mean, do we do we want to do this conversation again? Because we can we can just do the whole podcast on this again. Well, no, I'm just saying is that if I find <laughs> watch I, when the time comes and I do find somebody because okay, I kind of dated someone a little bit a while back, but like, and that once again, I was like two years ago, three years ago. Um, you know, that was my last serious uh, person I was dating. And, you know, and, and once again, that turned out to be someone who was dating me just so they couldn't. And once again, wonderful fucking person. She I had no real flaws with her except for the fact that she was dating me because she just didn't want to be alone. And I don't want to and I don't want to be like that to somebody else. I don't want to be somebody's, you know, oh, I'll get with you because, you know, I know on the third date I could fucking knock those boots and then, you know, treat you like shit and, and, and ghost on you. I don't want to fucking do that. Listen, <laughs> listen, I'm not saying that you have to. 
you know. All right, all right. Let's do, let's just. Or, or, or you look. I could look. Right. I mean, I, I or I could. No, 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 no. You started it. I could. I could. We it. could set it up up front and say, look, you know, I'm only in this to fucking get laid or whatever. And then that's what I'm saying to you, dude. Is do it basically ninety nine chicks and at least uh, one out of the hundred. Uh, <laughs> the first ninety nine will never write me back, and then the, the one the one who answers yes will probably say okay. <laughs> yeah, but right. see, part of the problem too is Chris, and oh. you've admitted to this, so I, I don't want to hear it. Is you have high standards. Yeah, you have very high standards. Mind, and mind you, this chick could have a really, a really beautiful face mm-hmm. and an okay body, and you wouldn't like that. You're looking for the stick figure that's sitting over there, like, "Come here, Chris. My legs are open." That's what you're looking for. <laughs> and what I keep telling you is, is you need to lower your standards a lot, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you lower your standards and you start seeing people, like you'll sit there and go, "Okay." And that's what I did, dude. Like I did that a long, long, long time ago. You know, I, I, I was like you. I'll be, I'll admit it. I was like, yeah, I want this really fucking hot chick, and I want to bang her every single, you know, fucking way. But here's the thing. You know this better than I do. After a while, you kind of look at that and you just go, I don't, I don't really, I don't really want this. You know what I mean? Like I don't really want this type of chick. I don't want like the chick that just, you know that like wants to spend all my fucking money and then I'm and then just you know has me to the wind kind of thing like mm-hmm. you sit there and you go okay if this girl has a cute face she can do a b and c mm-hmm. and the sex is good what the fuck do I care seriously what what the fuck do you care dude mm-hmm. and by the way yeah if you're upfront and honest with somebody dude I, I know for a fact that you probably go up on a, uh what is it um okay cupid mm-hmm. and they have an option there for hookup you're telling me that there's girls that you're not seeing on there that that don't have hookup? Come on. Fuck that, dude. I'm, I'm sure there's some girls there. Yeah, maybe they're on the heavier side, but guess what, dude? What does it matter? Mm-hmm. And and just go from the perspective, hey, look, I don't know what I – I don't really know what I want. Let's just do this. If we don't – you know, we'll do this for a while. And if this doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Then there's no, then there's no like, fucking, you know, things with it. There's no, like – you know, what is it? Um, commitment to it. There's no, you know, you're just doing this. Yeah. And guess what? You're gonna be a better person because of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's nothing. There's <laughs> nothing to say. Listen to me, dude. Like, there's nothing to say that you can't, like, have a chick and have sex with her, and then have no feelings behind it. There's nothing to say that you don't need that. And sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you. And there's been studies about this. Men need that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Men need that kind of release because it makes us better people. It, it sounds funny, it does, and maybe and you know some women that listen to this podcast might be like, "Well, Paul, you're 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 overextending it." But there have been several studies, seriously, mm-hmm. that say that men that get laid on a, on a regular basis, and this goes actually for women too, believe it or not, mm-hmm. like you have such a better outlook on mm-hmm. you know. I'm not saying. Well, yeah, of course I'm a miserable fuck because I'm not getting laid. That's that's a fucking that's a definite. (laughs) Exactly, dude. So what what is what's the problem? That's that's what I'm saying to you is what's the problem with just meeting some chicks and just having sex and making it upfront and just saying, listen, I don't know where this is gonna go, but I'm looking to get laid. That's all. Mm -hmm. And then just go from there. That's all I'm saying. Like. I don't know how many times I have to have a conversation with you on this yeah, podcast. I just, about this. I don't know. Like, I'm, t- I'm so tired of fucking women and their bullshit, man. It's like, you know, I don't. It's, it's, uh, dude, you know, it's, I mean, it's, I, once again, yeah. I guess if I if I go in at that angle, I, I guess you know, I'm addressing it wrong because I'm I'm going in at the angle that I'm looking for a relationship, which I wouldn't mind being in a relationship, but you know, uh, dude, how old are you again? I'm, I'll I'll be 42 in two weeks. Okay, so you're not getting any younger, right? Mm-hmm. What the fuck doesn't matter? I had my kid. I'm done. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I replaced it, I, myself. I, mean, I could drop that now. What does it matter? <laughs> what does it fucking matter right now? Do you? I mean, honestly, like if you just meet a chick and all you do, all you guys do is bang, and eventually, like, hey, you guys actually fall in love with each other. Mm-hmm. Great, wonderful. But, mm-hmm. dude, what do you have to lose? You have nothing to fucking lose at this point. True. You and know what I'm that, saying? And now that I'm driving again, I mean, you know, I could actually... Because I, I would have felt like a real bum like if I didn't have a car. Like, hey, you exactly. know, I'm looking to just and, fuck. And, and, like, saying, and I have to pick you up too, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, take I mean, Uber. honestly, like, here's the thing that I've learned, Chris, is it's like you get one of these situations where it's like... And, you know, I, I kind of feel the same way 
you probably do. You come out of a you come out of a, a long relationship and you think, okay, what the fuck did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. Because that's that's the thing. Like I know I know you make fun of me for the 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 uh, all these things that I'm putting up, and really everything that I'm putting up on my Facebook, which nobody can see because it's private. I may I may end up making a personal page, but that's down the road. Um, but if you think about it, Chris, like when you when you self like evaluate yourself and you look at the situation and you actually really really do the deep thinking. Mm-hmm. You come out of that saying, okay, this is what I did wrong, and this is what I did right, mm-hmm. and I need to change these things in order for me to be a better person, or even if I want to be back together with a different person, that same person that I was with, I need to make these changes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you also have to understand that you know it, it's very, very mentally taxing on you i mean you had some you had two fucked up women chris two really fucked up women one of them almost sent you to jail yeah (laughs) so i mean i hate to say this to you dude but what the fuck do you have to lose i'm gonna keep saying this to you till i get it into your fucking brain what do you have to lose if it's some girl that just sucks your dick like two or three times a week what the fuck do you (laughs) like and there's no commitment you're in fucking heaven any guy would want that shit serious man like Mm. are you fucking serious I don't want that because I just want a fucking relationship. But I'm just saying, like, for you, like, right now, what you need to do is you need to have just some girl that literally just sucks your dick <laughs> and fucks you. And basically, that's all it is until you can get the confidence back to be like, okay, now I'm ready for a relationship. Because honestly, dude, mm-hmm. going through all the shit that I've been going through, I don't think that you're ready for a relationship. I'm oh, saying, all right. <laughs> have somebody. <laughs> this sounds all fucked up, but I think you're ready to have somebody fuck you and suck your dick. But like, you know what I mean? Like, you need to. It's it's weird because it's hard to explain because women won't understand this. Guys understand it. Mm-hmm. Women don't because a guy, him. when a guy comes out of a relationship and he really had a deep, deep love for somebody, he has to do. He has to get laid. Actually, <laughs> he actually has to get laid because. And mentally, he doesn't know what the fuck's wrong, what the fuck's going on. He needs to have that confidence again. He needs to be able to know that hey, some actual chick wants to fuck me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of being in being in a basement and being all fucking depressed, like oh god, my <laughs> life sucks. I think I'm gonna cut myself. I mean that that I mean is as funny as that sounds. Like there's some guys out there that do that. Well, you know, I mean, look, you know, it, it, there's no doubt that there's like fucking you know, I don't know, depression is such a fucking strong word, but definitely depressive. You know, I mean, it definitely, you know, and, and would it be great to be with someone? Yeah. Would it be someone to fucking, you know, look forward to seeing and shit like that? Absolutely. I guess, you know, I, I, maybe I'm, too, maybe I am too negative because I've been burned so many fucking times that it's sort exactly, of like, exactly, dude. Like, oh, you know. And, and listen, dude, that's, that's perfectly normal. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly what you went through is what, what happened to you and coming out fucking of that. That's post traumatic. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, but it, it's perfectly normal. How old is your kid now? Uh, she's nine years old. Oh, she'll yeah, be nine I mean, later dude, on. In the... I mean, when when did you stop seeing uh, her mom? Well, no, like, well, I, a couple I mean, years ago. Nah, me and her mom probably stopped around right around like you know we were still kind of together around the beginning of the podcast, like a little about a little, little less than seven years ago. And there was mm-hmm. that girl I was dating like two summers ago, you know, and and, 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 and that honestly, was the last like serious relationship. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. It took me seven years to find somebody that actually was worth my time. Mm-hmm. It took me seven years. Now, don't get me wrong, I had a fucking crazy ass ex, mm-hmm. but um, and thank God she's not like that anymore. But you know, it, it, it's one of those things that you have to sit there and you got to go, okay, I'm ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know I, this is what I want. This is what I want to go for, and this is what I'm gonna do. And again, dude, it's it's again, you're you're not gonna be a bad guy for doing that. People that have this, there's some people out there that have this sense that, oh God. I'm doing something wrong because I'm not in a relationship or like you have a kid with somebody. Oh God, I didn't marry this person. So I'm a bad person. That's out the window now. That's mm-hmm. out the fucking window now. You know what I mean? Like now you can just fuck a girl and whatever and go. There's a lot of girls out there that will sit there and tell you all day long that they want to just, they just want to, they want to have a relationship in reality after the first date. Mm-hmm. You're probably fucking. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I guess, I mean, if you lay the, if you lay those cards on a table at the beginning, then it's totally fair. You know, it's yeah. totally fair. I mean, you know, once again, I I don't want to put anybody, I don't want to make anybody think I'm ready for a relationship and I fuck them in. And because you know, like I said, like like I said, if I wanted to fucking get laid, 
I could sweet talk somebody. You know, I could probably get laid tonight if I wanted to. You so know then go get laid after this podcast. Go get fucking laid. It's and I want video proof. Well, no, I don't want video proof of your ugly ass. Fuck that. I'm just saying, <laughs> I you, say know, that, I, you, know, you know what I mean? You know, I could, I could sweet talk someone who's sweet and gullible. And, 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 you know, who thinks maybe, oh, if he'll fuck, you know, it, I'll say he just wants to fuck just so, you know, uh, I'll go along with it because, you know, I can make this work in a relationship or something like that. You know, I, I don't want to, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I probably am self defeating myself by fucking thinking this way. You know, and, and once again, well, stop. yeah, I, you know, and I do have to get the fuck out of this house. You know, I, I do, I try to fucking socialize, you know, uh, I mean, not, I haven't done anything in a while, but you know, it's also, you know, with work, ah, I don't know. Dude, I've seen you, I've seen you at that bar that you go to down the street. Oh yeah. I've seen pictures (laughs) of you and there's some other chicks around you and I'm just sitting there going, why haven't you banged any of those chicks? (laughs) They're college girls. And I'd be the dirty old man. Dude. Want to come to my house? (laughs) Dude, there's some, listen. Not to put any cops. They're the, they're the, the cops coming for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, look, officer, if they were here, if they're in the bar, they're supposed to be at least 21. Come on. They're Call me a break to here. You on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cologne, we, we need you to come down to the, uh, the precinct, it's, it's please. It's not my fault. They didn't check fucking IDs at the door. <laughs> um, but, dude, I mean, I mean, college girls don't really fucking care. Just what do you care? <laughs> I mean, some of them might just be like, oh, he's he's an older guy. I've never tried that before. Yeah. There are girls like that, and they could be j- drop dead Daddy gorgeous. Issues. <laughs> I'm like, I'm being serious with you, dude. Like, they may just be like, "Hey, I want to experience this." Mm-hmm. You know what, what's what's the problem in 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 doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I got you. What the, what the fuck? Like, do we do we need to have this com- conversation every podcast? Chris? <laughs> do we need to do this. Do I need to have an ir- intervention with you? Is that what I need to do? <laughs> like seriously? Like, dude, I, I I had the I mean, kind of to move away from this a little bit. I just had like the the best weekend of my life. Going to, to MomoCon. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's 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 get into that. Um, yeah, get away from <laughs> get away from my depressing sex life. Uh, <laughs> you should be fapping. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Memorial Day weekend, you went down to MomoCon, which is I held in. Not, sir. <laughs> it, that's in Georgia. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Third time, uh, third or fourth time I've gone. Okay, so it's in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Is it okay? So I know when you go down there. Yes. You kind of make you kind of make a sidetrack to to um, the Turner Building, right? The, 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 like you know. So what happened was is so, it a, is it close or is it? So basically, hmm. unlike in years past, I don't have, um, I didn't have like a Turner contact. Mm-hmm. So what I did was, so I I never really had a chance to kind of ask them, hey, can I come down there and see the inside of the building? Mm-hmm. So basically. I uh, I emailed her and I was like, look, you know, you guys aren't going to be doing, you know, you guys aren't going to be giving us a lot of stuff. You know, do you have a problem if like maybe we came down and saw Adult Swim? Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, this is, you know, come down at this time and, you know, that's fine. So we checked into our hotel, me, Sketch, and CJ. Uh, we went to Momocon, got our stuff for press. What the um, hell does, I mean... I, it's funny. We've been talking about this for like six, seven years. What the fuck yes. does MomoCon stand for? I, does Mo, I have to look that up. Man. Is it like Memorial? Like, because it's it's always on Memorial Day weekend, right? Yeah, and that, that, you know, I, I kind of thought that's what it was, but I don't think that's what it means. But then that would be uh, me- that would be MemoCon. <laughs> something. What the? F- so you go and you even you don't know what the fuck it means? I thought it maybe I maybe it might have been some anime I, thing. I, or... I mean, I haven't gone, and this is like the first time in a couple years that I've gone to MomoCon. Because you know, Italians. Um, you know, when a guy's a fucking idiot, he's a fucking Momo. <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to say, Chris? Well, I'm just, I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, when I, I, growing up downtown Manhattan, I had plenty of Italian friends, you know, I lived just on the edge of Little Italy. And when someone called someone a Momo, that was a fucking insult. That was like, that guy's a punk or he's an idiot or, 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 you know, you know, the, the, you know, well, maybe the you derogatory word, the tar- tell- derogatory word for a gay man. You know what I'm saying? It's maybe like you should tell the con that. <laughs> it's a momo. It's look at this fucking momo over here. You know, he's who got it. Forget about it. I'm gonna make some scrunchie. But <laughs> so when I hear momo, you know, and and then of course there's the there's the momo uh, monster that came ha- famous in the past year. But I mean that has nothing to do with it. But like it's like what the fuck is momo? Is it a basically, I, I thought maybe it was a Japanese thing or like. 
it's probably a Japanese thing, but basically mm-hmm. Momocon is an animation and gaming con, basically. So um, there really wasn't, I'll be honest with you, there really wasn't like any, like a lot of voice actors or actresses going for like anime. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, uh, but then like Toonami said that they were going to have a lot of big announcements and, okay. you know, their immersion event is coming uh, in November. That's when they, they said they're going to be, they're going to be doing it in November. So I'm gonna... that was the whole reason I went down there and I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to try and see if I can go to adult swim too. And sure enough, they let me in the front door. So, or well, kind of front door. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So not to cut you off. Uh, I, I go, I had, I went on Wikipedia Momo is the Japanese word for peaches. Oh, okay. And, so and that's since why. Georgia is famous for its peaches, that's that's exactly what it an is. Anime, I, I forgot about that. And yeah. and then even like uh, the logo that I'm looking at has peaches in in, in part right. of the, the logo. Okay, so that's that's so I I, I satisfied. Uh, you think in the past fucking six years I would have Googled this shit and I, I finally do it now. Okay, so you we, so uh, you know you emailed a couple of contacts, a couple of the, your your industry contacts that you have, and mm-hmm. they let you into Adult Swim. Yes, because that's not is that's not to be confused with the something Cartoon street. Network. Oh no. It, so William street William is street, where yeah, adult that's... swim is. That's why they call it William street because it's actually on William street. Okay. It's, it's directly across the road, across the highway from cartoon network. We actually saw a cartoon network from where we were. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the TBS adult swim building. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we got to see, we pretty much got to see the whole inside of adult swim. That, that was, pretty awesome i wanted to steal the tsunami posters off the wall but you know, <laughs> whatever um and then we ironically uh we were talking to the editors because they all know me and which is really funny because every person that knew me that saw me they're like oh hey paul wait this is the first time you're here at adult swim i'm like yes for the 50th time this is the first time i've been here <laughs> <laughs> um they uh they're like oh yeah did you meet the new editor and i'm like what do you mean new editor <laughs> mm-hmm. like I don't know anything about a new editor. Like, oh, well, he started like four or five days ago. I'm like, bring his ass over here. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to meet him, which is awesome. Um, and we knew that before anybody else. So there you go. Um, so, I mean, it was it was a great experience. That was that was the first day. That was Thursday. We went and saw that. Uh, Friday was the Toonami panel. I was there for that. Um, my friends that do the nerdcore thing actually had a concert after the tsunami panel at 11. So I was there for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got to see all them. Finally, I got to meet some of those guys. It was a lot of first seeing people. So, um, was there any, any mega ran or sky blue or anything on anybody like that? Um, Sky blue wasn't there. Mega ran wasn't there, but it was, uh, Kadesh flow was there. Um, Richie was there. Uh, IQ was there. Um, oh, okay. Okay. creative mind frame was there. Those are the guys I know. I know all those guys. So mm-hmm. it was a great, it was, it was just a really great weekend. I got to meet everybody finally that I haven't been meeting that I've just talked to all the time and I haven't seen. Um, well, I saw you had pictures so, with, uh, Steve Bloom. Yes. Steve was there. So what um, was that about? Uh, no, we, we usually do a, do an interview with them after the panel. So, mm-hmm. um, that'll be coming out soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a great. There, there's another picture too. You'll see, like I'm, I'm in a picture with, um, uh, I think she's Chinese um, or Japanese. Um, she's the uh, the president of uh, Production IG here in the United States. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we got to interview her. That was on Saturday. It, it was a really good experience. Like, and and she's such the sweetest. She's she's the sweetest person I've ever seen. She was trying to steal one of a. One of the the tsunami people's kids. It was kind of funny. She's like, "Do, do you want to come home with me to LA?" And then we're all just sitting there going, "Does she know she's saying that in front of everybody?" <laughs> yeah, it's a kid but, being cute or whatever. You know, it's yeah, playful. So I mean, this was this was like just a, a great weekend. I mean, you you know what I've been going through lately, man, and it's just, you know, I, I've been having a lot of pluses here in 2019. You know, paying off bills one by one by one. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, not having to work more than one job, um, you know, going to Momocon. I mean, it's been such a positive 2019 so far. Um, you know, there's other things going on that I'm not going to talk about here on the podcast. But, you know, um, there, there's a lot more positives that I see coming. Um, I just want to continue the positive because I'm, I'm sick and tired. You know, I'm, I was sick and tired of what 2018 had and. You know, it's just great to have this year and be able to kind of, you know, just have a positive year. That's the mm-hmm. word. That's the word for this year, positive. 
So I positively feel like Chris will get laid, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and I don't... That's my... Have we discussed in the last episode that that uh, that I got the press pass for Comic Con? Did we have, did we have we discussed that since? Yeah, but we should talk about that. But yeah. so yeah, so I did get the press pass for for New York Comic Con, and Sorry, then Matt. and it's funny. Well, I kind of had this in the nerdy news, but it's not really nerdy news. And it's you're gonna you're gonna be happy, but then you're gonna be angry at me. I've been I've been slowly trying to get into anime. <laughs> And you would think after all these years of people that I've interviewed, <laughs> I've interviewed people that are fucking titans in the fucking That's industry. Awesome. And uh, so I've been now. The only thing is you're going to kill me is that I've been watching all this stuff on Hulu. <laughs> no, I mean, I have Hulu, too. So so I've been watching. And what I do is because, you know, when I work during the day, you know, I can have the TV on in the background. So yeah. I've been watching uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Is it subbed? No, no, oh, this, yeah, it is this subbed. Is, it's no, this is dubbed. I, 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 I can't, I can't work in sub. I can't, I can't work in. Okay. I, I can't work and and do subs because I, I can't. I can't. Well, that's not on that's on Netflix. Screen. That's why. Okay. No, no, no. It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay. Yeah. So, so JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, uh, uh Cowboy Bebop. Oh, which, good choice. And once again, you know, you know, uh, what you mentioned earlier, meeting Steve Bloom, and it blows my mind that Steve Bloom is one of the more busiest guys in the fucking industry and yet still goes to these cons still is awesome with the fucking fans you know right. the guy is super fucking talented um once again you know look at his fucking imdb page hundreds hundreds of fucking entries mm -hmm. and then still and is still the nicest fucking guy uh you know um so uh and then and let me tell you honest to good honest to god uh a friend of mine the, my friend that passed away back in 2007 uh, Jimmy, uh, way before, you know, uh, cause, cause Cowboy Bebop, if I, if I understand correctly, came out like in 2000, uh, 1999 or 1998 mm -hmm. or whatever. I remember bef before my friend Jimmy passed away, he had the Cowboy Bebop. He had at least season one or season two, and it was on his DVD, you know, where, where he kept all his DVDs and stuff like that. And I remember years ago, way before, I mean, I knew of anime, like to me, anime was just like, Dragon Ball Z and Akira. That's all I fucking knew. <laughs> but my friend Jimmy, years ago, and I'm talking about 2004, 2005, was recommending to me um, Cowboy Bebop. And, you know, and and once again, of course, there's also the connection since I'm such a nerd for uh, 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 Megas XLR that you know both Steve Bloom and Wendy <clears throat> Lee from Cowboy Bebop also did voices in Megas XLR. Um, yep. All right, so okay, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The fucking name is appropriate because it's a fucking bizarre ass show. Yes, it is. Cowboy Bebop, it's growing on me. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like it at first, but I was just like, you know, let me. I said, let me give it a shot. Let me not be an asshole. It's starting to grow on me. You know, uh, you know. Once again, I'm still, you know, everything right now. I'm still in season one. Darrell um, and Sketch would be so proud of you <laughs> right now. Um. Okay. Uh. Jojo Bizarre Adventure. Hold on. Uh. Um. Oh. Uh. Kill a kill. Which you know, mm. I I mm. accidentally stumbled upon at Comic Con, and and you know I you know I'm digging it, uh, you know of course you know it's fucking. Weird. I think it was announced there, wasn't it? In your Comic Con, or if you remember, it was announced for Toonami there. I think it was announced, but uh, I remember it was the night where I saw the girls doing the cosplay, and you know the cosplay is basically fucking girls almost naked, uh, but they have battle armor on, and so I kind of just like. I'm like, oh, what's going on over here? And it was a panel. <laughs> oh, what's going on? With <laughs> and 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 it was one of the. It was literally like the last panel of the night. So like the the floor had died down, and I was just like, oh, what's this over here? And I saw people taking pictures of these girls, and his girls like basically naked, but with battle armor on. And I was like, all right. And then like that episode, they played the very first episode of of Kill the Kill, and then they played at that particular time what was the most current episode, but that was <laughs> that was sub that was subtitled. Uh, but at that particular time, like, it was like nobody in that room, uh, you know, besides the industry people, nobody in that room has seen that episode before that night. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and that's, and I, I want to say that's like the, like the end of season two or the beginning of season three or something like that. I don't know exactly when, what I saw, but I mean, I, like, I was enthralled. And I, and I always kind of had it in the back of my head and I was like, all right, I'll come back. Um, One Punch Man. Which once again, <laughs> here I go. I interviewed fucking all these guys on the show. <laughs> Never saw the show. And then the funny thing is, even like today, I was watching. Uh, not today. Earlier this week, I was watching uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I'm hearing the guy's voice. And I'm like, why does this guy sound familiar? Why does this guy? And it was the guy that uh, his name is uh, 
Ben Diskin? Cr- no, no, Chris Jai Alex. If, if I remember, mm-hmm. I, I want to say I know it's Chris Jai something, and he 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 does Lord Boros in One Punch Man, but then he plays his character ACDC on JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventure. But the funny thing is that like I'm like I'm the, and I'm, well, I'm you know and I'm working, but I could hear the voices in the background. I was like, why the fuck does this guy sound familiar? And it was the guy from the interview. You know, I interviewed this guy years ago, not knowing who the fuck he is. You know. And pretending like I fucking knew anime, and uh, so uh, got a chance to watch that. And then the last one uh, that everyone seems to love is My Hero Academia. So I've been, you know, I've been, I'm slowly getting into it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not exactly, you know, putting on my. This is some fucking breaking news. I'm putting this <laughs> shit up on Tsunami News tonight. Holy shit! I'm slow because I mean, you know, and then hopefully, you know, by the time fucking New York Comic Con comes around, if we have me interview, I could talk to fucking people. Like I know who the fuck, <laughs> like I know who the fuck they are. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you were this guy and that. You know, so I'm going up on Twitter right now as we're doing this podcast. <laughs> I'm fucking gonna do this shit. I'm tagging and... your ass in it too. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. So it's a uh, cowboy bebop, and then the whole thing is that like the the same guy that uh, you know, I'm not gonna say his name. The same guy that kind of gives that sends you all the uh, the, the early release DVDs uh, for the Warner Brothers. Um, he had. Years years ago, he had sent me an email if I wanted to do a review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I did, and he never sent it to me. And and since I did that particular time, I didn't know like I didn't know what it was or I didn't care. Now I'm kind of like a little bit part of me is like I wish I would have gotten exposed to this a little earlier. Yeah, now the first see? season, the first season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is really fucking odd. You know, it it gets better. I mean, no, I I guess technically I'm still in the first season, but well, you know, you I'm later. The... I'm I'm like towards the end of the first season where when and you I, get. Go on, I'm sorry. When you when you get to the third season, mm-hmm. the third season's really good. I got into JoJo on the third season. Yeah, because it is really fucking bizarre. Because you're just sitting there going, "What the fuck is <laughs> going on here?" And one of the guys who has been on the show years ago, his name is Chris Van- Vangelis. Uh, he fucking loves JoJo Bizarre Adventure. Like, they, like that's it. Like that and Megas XLR are like his fucking jam. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm you know, I haven't spoken to him yet, but I'm sort of like in my head, I'm like. Dude, I'm only watching this show because you recommended it, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, and once again, it's growing on me. When I first saw it, I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Um, and, uh, oh, also just totally off, you know, uh, bef- 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 this is before your time on the show. Uh, we had interviewed, uh, this girl, uh, Mujige Cooper. Um, she works for NASA. She was on that show, King of the Nerds. And, uh, we got a chance to interview her for one of the episodes back when King of the Nerds was still on TBS. And, um, if you get a chance, uh, there, she, he, she has two episodes on YouTube. You know that, that series from Nerdist that is called Because Science? And mm-hmm. it's got the guy with, he's got the highlighter markers and he's drawing on the screen. He kind of looks like Thor a little bit. Well, there's, there's one called Bes- uh, Because Science. And now they have an offshoot channel called, uh, Because Space. And Mujige Cooper fucking, she's worked for NASA. I believe she's still working for NASA at this time. But now they kind of, and you know, dude, she's, she's a pretty fucking girl. So, you know, uh, you know, a pretty <laughs> smart girl, you know, talking about space. And like the first episode they did, there's two episodes out. I don't know which came out first, but <clears throat> they did one talking about like the scientific possibility of a multiverse. And was it just theories? Not saying that there is. And then the second episode she did, was and it was this was cross promoted with the the next season of Archer that's coming out, uh, which is kind of going to be like Archer in space. Um, the effects of alcohol on your body if you are in a spaceship, and you know, and of course, you know, they take a fun subject like that and they get into all the science, but you know, it's still fun stuff like that. So if you get a chance, it's called Because Space. It's from the same people who do Because Science. It's that guy who looks like Thor who draws on the screen. You know, stuff. I think it's part of the Nerdist channel. Mm-hmm. Um, so. All right. Um, I don't know. I just, should... I just put it up on Twitter too. <laughs> okay. Um, I know you said you wanted to stay positive, so I don't know. Maybe we should. I don't know. Let's stay positive. Uh, let me see. You know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, everything else. <laughs> everything else I have here. All right. I visited New York City. Went down. You know. Uh, I mean, we can go to a commercial break first. Yeah, I think. On. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of. I mean, uh, I, I want to keep it light. I don't want to get all depressing. You know, uh, Trump still sucks, so we'll leave that alone. No, no, <laughs> let's not do that. This yeah. this fuck that. Um, I then, mean, I feel like we talk about that all the time, and it's just yeah. Let's not de- let's not depress our. You know, this, 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 people be depressed when about my really, sex life, and not about Trump. Really, really pisses us off. That's that's bring him back up. Fuck him. I don't well, want to give him any more traction than I need to. The video. 
of the kid drop kicking Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Arnold Schwarzenegger is at I want to they said it was I believe it was in South Africa at a you know an event for health and exercise and there's these kids doing gymnastics and kids doing uh you know flips and 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 all this other stuff and and when I, have you you seen the of course you've seen the video right what's that when the kid drop kicks Arnold Schwarzenegger from behind um I mean it's kind of old by the time we're recording this but I mean it's been out for at least a week or two yeah you you haven't seen it uh no I haven't seen okay it. so it's it's this event it's in South Africa. And once again, it's just it's it's an event. It's in a gym, or it looks like, or, or, or a gymnasium, or an auditorium, where you know there's tables lining the walls, and you know and he's signing autographs and all this other stuff. And it's kids doing flips and gymnastics and stuff like that. So uh, they have the camera in front of him. Now he gets up from the table. Now he's standing almost like in front of his table with his back to like the main part of the room. And there's kids walking around with with self with their cell phones taking video and stuff like that. And of course, you know, that's natural. Fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, you're going to take video. If he's, if he's 10 feet in front of you, of course, you're going to take video. So then, like, I don't know if it's the, there is one kid that looks really fucking sketchy. And I don't, I don't know if it's the same kid. This kid does a fucking full on run. And kicks on and does a drop kick to Arnold Schwarzenegger to the back. Now, mind you, this kid is probably 98 pounds soaking fucking. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger standing in a crowd. And the funny thing is, I mean, he he kind of has like this weird look on his face when he finally gets a hit. But you know, Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger later on, like he put like in his Twitter, is like he goes, "I thought it was just the crowd pushing me." <laughs> like, you know, kind of like you know, this, this kid did a full run and drop kick. And uh, but the funny thing, dude, is like. Uh, and once again, this, since so many people had their cell phones out because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's this great angle like where like he he hits Arnold, he hits the floor, and then Arnold's bodyguard fucking grabs this kid by the neck, and this guy looks like a fucking you know, and of course like I don't not that Arnold needs really a bodyguard or whatever. I mean he probably needs arm security, but I mean this dude looked like a fucking MMA fighter, and the way he grabbed this fucking kid's neck, it was like <laughs> he was ready to he was ready to Batista bomb this motherfucker. Um, and the kid started screaming something. I don't think the kid got in big trouble. I don't think like Arnold Schwarzenegger pushed, pressed charges or anything like that. But I think that's more of just like you know that would be a, a, a media you know field day if he if he did. And you know like I said, the kid the kid's like ninety eight pounds soaking wet. So, uh, but when you see the when you see the video, it is pretty interesting because Arnold Schwarzenegger does have like this weird like distressed look on his face. But you know. You know, Why but did you again, kick me? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's you Why know, it's obviously surprised. No one, no one's expected to fucking get kicked from behind. But like the kid hit, it, the kid might as well have kicked the fucking wall. You know what I'm saying? Because you see the video of the kid when he hits Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger flies forward. It's sort of like a, it looks like if you shove someone's shoulder from behind. You know, right. <laughs> and especially someone that's not expecting it. You know, it's like what the fuck, dude. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I think with that, uh, oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. That was the. Uh, <laughs> this has been all over Facebook. The Snapchat filter of oh, people God. of people uh, swapping genders, like you know, the guys I am not doing that. By the way. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Fuck that. And and like the whole thing is like I think the Snapchat one does video now because we were doing this like a year ago. Because I remember I did one where I, I was like uh, Harley Quinn or something, <laughs> or something. Like, oh no, or, or no, I, I did I do that? I I know they were doing. There was another program called like Face App. That was doing the girls, but then I, I did like two or three, and I posted them online. Like my daughter, when I went to go to visit New York, my daughter showed it to my mom, and my mom's like, "Who the fuck is like my?" She, my daughter didn't tell my mom that it was me, and she goes, "Grandma, look at this," and my mom's like, "Who the hell is that?" And I said, "Mom, that's me." <laughs> and it's weird because if you, even if you have a beard, it kind of it tries to like take your beard and kind of like make it look like skin and stuff like that. But in one of the pictures, I look like I look like Roseanne Barr. <laughs> but then the, the part that kills me is that my daughter does it. You know, the swap where it makes her look like a boy. And she's a good looking boy. Like, motherfucker. Like, like if my daughter was a boy, if I had a son, he'd probably get more fucking play than me. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. All right. And I think uh, with that, we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building. Door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Huh. 
Necrophilia. Ah, ah, ah. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema Psyops is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, Prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of it. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did be a you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. And we're back. All right, Paul, so let's get to the nerdy news. As I'd mentioned earlier, I uh, went to go see, uh, we're recording this on the 31st. Last night, went to go see opening night, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Now, let me just say that I've never been a Godzilla fan. Like, when I was a mm. kid, and, you know, the Fox, the Fox station in, in New York City is Channel 5, you know. Channel 5, like, on Saturdays, after cartoons, I remember they would give Godzilla. You know, I, you know that was sort of, and I'd have it on. But I really did not care for Godzilla. Now that being said, I love the idea of giant kaijus. I love, I love the idea of movies where monsters fight. My beef with the whole Godzilla franchise was, I don't give a shit about Japanese soldiers or Japanese businessmen or, you know, all these people, you know. And of course they had some weird storylines and there's people with fucking aliens coming, you know, alien people coming from another planet and all this other stuff. And, and there are people out there who are diehard Godzilla fans and, and, you know, nothing, not to take that away from them, but I was sort of like, I don't give a shit about the people. Give me an edit of the movie that's just the monsters fighting. And I'll be happy with that. You know, they, you know, I loved Megas XLR. You know, I loved, you know, I grew up, you know, I liked Voltron. I liked, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was never big into Power Rangers, but, you know, that, that was a little past my time. But, I mean, I dug Power Rangers because I want to see people fight. I didn't give a shit about the first 20 minutes of the episode when people are talking and shit like that. I don't care about the, the fucking high school. I want to see giant things fighting and smashing into buildings. <laughs> giant things. <laughs> That being said, <laughs> this Godzilla King of Monsters fucking delivers. It is really fucking good. You're not you the know. first person I've heard say that either. And 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 you know, and of course, you know, I had to go see it in IMAX because I'm an asshole. Yep. <laughs> yep. But uh, you know, you know, the special effects, you know, they weren't perfect. Don't be wrong. You know, you had, but you know, you have Godzilla, you have uh, King Ghidorah. You have Mothra, you have Rodan. There are other monsters in the movie, and I, I, hopefully that's not spoiling anything. There's there's a bunch of other. And of course, remember, this is going to be a universe that connects to Kong Skull Island. So there are references to King Kong in this movie. There's a lot. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, I mean, they flat out say Kong on Skull Island, you know, and then, and then, you know, once again, I, 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 it's not, it's not spoiling it. We all know this. So there are references to Kong. That being said, I, it's not really spoiling, but no, you do not see King Kong. Um, but there are other monsters uh, besides the the big four, and uh, it was good. You know, the parts with the people, eh, I could have done without, but at least like they made the story a bit compelling. Um, I'm not a big, obviously, since I'm not a big fan of the movie, I don't know how it sticks to the lore. Like, obviously, you know, this is its own universe; it's not trying to be connected to the other Japanese movies. So it sort of has its own idea and the history of the monsters and where they came from and why they're here and stuff like that. I kind of like the lore that, you know what I'm saying? Like, once again, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, that's like if someone saw the brand new Transformers movie and said, oh, I love the, I love the lore. And I, like me as a cartoon fan, I'm like, that fucking movie is garbage. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, you know, I don't know how true it is to the lore. I am coming into this series. Now, my, and mind you, there was the one in 2014 that, even the biggest fans were like, you know, what you, and, and I was watching a, a YouTube video about, you know, in the, in the 
in the 2014 one, he's in the movie for fucking eight minutes. Right. And then when you do see him, it's a flash of his tail or, you know, or him just about to go in the water and stuff like that. This movie, it is flat out. I mean, there are full blown fights and, and, and things getting knocked into buildings. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, look, this ain't Shakespeare. <laughs> you know, it's there for the spectacle. It's there to see, you know, Godzilla and he's nuclear powered and his fucking, you know, he's got his fins that glow and, and King, uh, you know, Ghidorah, you know, taps into the fucking lightning and there's fucking lightning shooting out of his fucking wings and, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Rodan comes out of a fucking volcano and, uh, you know, and Mothra, like, you know, we get to see Mothra, like, before it goes into, like, when it's still like a, 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 a before it goes into the cocoon, before, when it's, a uh, a larva, you know what I'm saying, and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, for what it was, I fucking dug it. And I think, like, even if you're having doubts, go see it. Because cause, cause I enjoyed it, and I'm not a Godzilla fan. I'm not coming into this. You know, obviously, <clears throat> you know, if, if I was saying, you know, if this was a Marvel movie, uh, Chris, you've been talking about Marvel movies for the past fucking 10 years. And, of course, obviously, I'm going to like a yeah, Marvel movie. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a couple more points because I'm, I'm a fanboy. This, I came in... Almost skeptical. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, wow me. I mean, yeah, it looks good. The commercial looks okay. But I get, I guarantee you, in my head, I'm like, yeah, the commercial is going to show us the best parts and that's it. The rest of the movie is going to be, you know, people in a Japanese submarine, you know, crying about, oh, Godzilla was here a second ago and now he disappeared. You know, I thought it was going to be that. Luckily, it wasn't. It was giant fucking monsters smashing into other was fucking there a lot giant of monsters. watching it too? Or... Oh, yeah, no, we went, I went to the 10 o'clock show and the, now mind you, it wasn't a packed house. Like when I when I went to go see you know uh, Endgame, I mean you know we well, had yeah, to go, we had we had to, we had to go to the one fifty show because everything else was sold out. I went to the ten o'clock show, and I would say the theater was about eighty percent filled. You know it was it was pretty it was pretty you know. Uh, luckily, like I was able to sit. You know, I picked a seat that I didn't have anybody sit left or right of me. Like you know, there was probably like a couple to my right, and then like I would say about five or six chairs, and then another <laughs> guy to my left, and I was just off center from the screen towards the back. Um, and, you know, I fucking dug it. You know, I really, really dug it. So if that's your thing, uh, go see it. Um, also, uh, then when I went down to New York City, it was the weekend uh, Bright You know, Bright Burn supposed to be, you know, what if Superman came to Earth and was evil? Uh, it was good. You know, I think it's sort of, I think you have to have a flavor for those movies. Like, if, if you like... And once again, this is, I mean, it's like James Gunn produced it. I don't, I don't know if he wrote it also, but he produced, he didn't direct it, but the guy who directed it is like, has been James Gunn's, James Gunn's like right hand man. You know, like that guy, you know, he, he's been with James Gunn during Guardians of the Galaxy. He was with James Gunn back during, you know, so I would say if you liked his other movies, as in if you like Slither and you like Super and then, a little less. I, I didn't like it that much. The Belco project. If you kind of have that dark, like if you know, because trust me, the Brightburn you know, movie named Brightburn, it's fucking, it's a dark ass fucking movie. Uh, dark as in you know, like dark tones. You know, it's it's, um, you know, obviously they this movie is on a budget. You know, I think they what they said they made it for like seven million dollars or nine million dollars. It shows it's a not supposed to be this big giant uh, extravaganza, uh, but they do make you know the, what they. For a nine million dollar movie, the special effects are good. Um, it is a compelling. Once again, I think you know you're not gonna if you just if you just like Marvel movies. I don't think you're gonna walk into this and say, "Oh, I loved it." You know, if you like movies a little more, you know, and once again, it's supposed to be a horror movie. It's not a it's not a superhero movie, but I dug it. Um, <laughs> and of course, me being me, right after Brightburn snuck in to go see John Wick. <laughs> you, you want me to kill you, don't you? John Wick three, um, which was good, and and well, I, I'm gonna go back to you need to get laid. <laughs> um, and I didn't I didn't know this. The guy who directed John Wick three, and I don't know if he was involved with the other two. He was Keanu Reeves Keanu Reeves stuntman in like all the Matrix movies. So that being said, and if, and and dude, like the funny thing is, if you watch John Wick, if you're a Matrix fan, the first Matrix, go see John Wick three. And I mind you, I did not see two, one or two. You know, all my friends are saying they're great. Um, but I think if, if you're Matrix fans, go see at least John Wick 3 because, like, it's very, there's a lot of, there's Matrix references in the movie, 
and I think, and this one is not really spoiling. Um, they go, you know, what do you need? And then Keanu Reeves says, Keanu Reeves says, I need guns, lots of guns, which is, you know, lying straight out of the Matrix. Um, Lawrence Fishburne's in the movie. And to see Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves sharing screen time in a movie that Keanu Reeves is shooting and, and doing kung fu on everybody, uh, you know, takes me back 20 years to the, the original Matrix, the good one. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I fucking, I dug John Wick. And once again, I went into this movie not as a fan. I didn't see one or two. And I still thoroughly enjoyed part three. Um, the end of Game of Thrones, since our last episode, the, but did you ever, did you ever, did you ever watch Game of Thrones? Uh, no. <laughs> well, the funny thing is I stopped watching, I want to say this is like season six or seven. I stopped watching, I want to say season four. Now that being said, um, the last episodes I remember, the dragons were born and they were like the size of like small ponies like they were they were they were they weren't freshly born where like they're on like all three of them could sit on a table they were big they look like great danes or whatever you know like they were that height i haven't watched game of thrones at all for the past two seasons you know if you know where to look online you could down i watched the last episode now people were really fucking furious at this last this last season of, of game of thrones were like you know what about this plot line what about that plot line what about this what about that all this shit got thrown out the window now the funny thing is I haven't watched the show in about two years yet. I wasn't, so I didn't have, I didn't see any of all that stuff that all these people were expecting. But all the characters that were there in the last episode are characters I was familiar with from when I stopped watching in season four. <laughs> so to me, I actually enjoyed, <laughs> you know, but there's all, there, you know, I actually enjoyed the season finale, but there's all these people that are pissed off like, man, you know, they introduced this character and then he just died and then they were going to do this and that person just died. And, and of course, yeah, there were things even from the first episode that didn't fully get wrapped up. Right. But, uh, you know, once again, I dug it and once, and I haven't seen the episode, I haven't seen this show in two fucking years in the past two seasons, excuse me, because I don't, they didn't put out a season last year, but you know, I haven't watched a show in about three years or whatever and, I thoroughly enjoyed the season from the series finale, and that's because I wasn't disappointed by all the shit they didn't follow up on. And usually, I'm the guy that's like, "Ah, oh, fuck it," you know, "fuck it." People, they, you know, what about this? What about that? And I didn't miss it, so I enjoyed it. Um, okay, uh, the Picard trailer. Have you seen the Picard trailer? Oh yes, oh yes, I did. <laughs> oh yes, I did. I'm making white now. <laughs> I make him to my pants, <laughs> which is well, going to be so, interesting. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me give you a little background on that. Mm. Um, so mm. there's, um, if, uh, I'm trying to think it was the last episode of the next generation. It's they, called uh, all good things. Yes. All good things in that episode. It shows Picard as an old man. He has wine fields mm-hmm. and you know, he's doing the, basically the same thing. So it's kind of like, okay, we're doing this again. All right. <laughs> What, what, what's going on here? And by the way, what is this? What is this thing you're setting up about? He took a fleet in and did something epic. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't remember this. I don't but know I, what the I, f- they're I, talking about. But I think this may be catching up on that story. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And it's probably gonna it's gonna show him. It's gonna show how he became an admiral, probably. So there's that too. I'm, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to kind of see where this goes you know what i mean but yeah and of course you know i'm like you know uh, the uh, like i'm waiting for and of course i don't want to be disappointed but you know i'm waiting for the cameos i'm waiting for the datas i'm waiting for you know the geordies i'm waiting for you know (laughs) you know uh, i mean data's dead but yeah is he dead yeah he he died in the last movie well okay so it's kind of complicated so they found this uh, this other thing that looks like data. It's, it's, it was an, he had a an brother. Idea. Right. So they found another data and then he downloaded like all of his stuff into this other data. So they, uh, they basically set it up like this guy basically will become data, mm-hmm. but not really. So oh, okay. it's really weird, but yeah, I'm sure we'll see that too. We'll yeah. See. I mean, you know, or once again, you know, I, I was a fan of the next generation, not every episode, you know, but, you know, I, I watched them enough where, you know, I liked, I liked that show. Um, you know, part of me is apprehensive, but the other part of me is like, okay, it's called Picard. It's not 
Star Trek. This they can do whatever they want without it being officially about Starfleet. You know what I'm saying? Like this is just in that universe, so it right. doesn't have to be regulations and prime directives and 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 and, and, and um, you know what's the word? You know, uh, ambassadorship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't about being the good guys and and trying to you know bring peace to the universe. It could be about well, sometimes you got to do some dirt to get shit done. You know. So, so what I'm what I'm interested to see is there's going to be. Um, so basically it went next generation. They had that movie, which was the last movie. And then, um, the JJ Abrams first one mm-hmm. actually ties in with the next generation, uh, universe, because what happens is the Spock tries to stop, uh, the destruction of Romulus because mm-hmm. the star explodes. Mm-hmm. He does stop. He does stop the majority of the explosion, but after Romulus is destroyed. So it's going to be interesting to see if they bring they tie that in as well, mm-hmm. because you know they should have to tie that in somehow. But we'll we'll kind of get a, an idea of how that's going to affect everything too, because you know I, I think that's going to be an interesting thing to a dynamic to kind of see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean that's I mean that's why like people liked about like Deep Space Nine, and and to a lesser extent Voyager is that it was Star Trek without. It was Star Trek, but now you could bend the rules, you know, and that's what I'm looking forward to this, where it's the Star Trek universe, but you can do things, you know, it's, once again, it's not about diplomacy. It's about, you know, the future and, you know, and Picard, Picard vineyards <laughs> and shut up, Wesley. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so I, I mean, like, I'm, ex- I'm not like super duper excited, but I- I'm kind of, uh, you know, uh, okay. A few more things. The Terminator. Dark Fate trailer. Uh, once again, uh, what's his face comes back to the back to the you know the original director, but he's not directing. Um, why am I drawing a blank on the guy's name? The director of the first two Terminators. Um. <laughs> of uh, oh, uh, James Cameron. James Cameron. James Cameron is back as a producer with uh, Tim. Oh my God! I should have put this in my name. The guy who directed Deadpool. So, uh, the guy who directed Deadpool, who, who's, who had his own visual effects company for years, um, if you, if you liked, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, the fight scene between Batman and, uh, Deathstroke, that was done by his studios. Um, the, the original quote unquote leaked, uh, Deadpool footage, that was all his studio. So, you know, these are awesome fucking special effects. The new term, and, and, and of course, you know, just, you know, for the record, and everyone's been talking about it, this universe takes, this one takes place after part two. Uh, episode, you know, uh, you know, uh, the sequels, three, four, five, whatever, they're all, they're gone. It doesn't, they, they don't mean anything. They're alternate universes. <laughs> um, and not that they were ever, not that, I don't think any of those movies are ever like super duper connected, but you know, they didn't, it's not like they didn't even try to fucking connect them. Uh, this one is supposed to be, um, you know, uh, uh, Sarah Connor and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and now the, and then like you see, they visit Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I'm assuming that's like, cause they kind of, they made a joke about it in one of the other movies, like either three, four or five, where, you know, the guy that was the template for, for the Terminator. But then when he spoke, he had like a real fucking thick like country accent. Like, come on, boy, how you doing? Or whatever. And they're like, <laughs> and the guy's like, Oh, we got to change the voice. And then the scientists, who has the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger goes, Oh, we can change that easy. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, the, you see them visiting Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I'm assuming will be like the human being that they based the template on. Um, and once again, it's, I mean, total speculation. Um, we don't see John Connor. John Connor is not in this trailer at all, but yeah, that's going to be an interesting kind of dynamic to see what that's all about. And, but you do see. There's that, I mean, for a second, I thought it was, I was like, is that a guy or a girl? There's, there's another person there. It's a female. It's a girl, yeah. And then there's like a Spanish chick. Now, I'm, I once again, total fan speculation with no fucking, no, <laughs> nothing to back it up. I'm betting that maybe like that Spanish girl probably got knocked up by John Connor or something. Cause there's gotta be a reason they're protecting her. You know, there's gotta be, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised like, oh, you got, you know, like, you know, he got a girl pregnant or something. And then he got killed, 
Yeah, he died. You know, he died in some unrelated thing. You know, he fucking you know, got drunk and drove his car off the side of a road, and like, so the the whole reason Sarah Connor is even protecting her is because you know, oh shit, that's my that's my son's baby mama, <laughs> for the lack of a better term. Um, you know, which I mean, I hope it's, I hope it's not insulting. Like that's that's not the only reason she's in the movie. Uh, but obviously the, 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 the girl with the short hair and the tank top looks like either they're a Terminator or they're like a person that had like Terminator parts or, or just, you know, just so the trailer implants. basically, the, the trailer basically hints at the woman that's in, that's it basically. So it is a Terminator, but then basically what happened was is the, there's this other girl, like mm-hmm. this younger girl. That's her, but the Terminator that came that came from the future is her in the Terminator form because they transferred her consciousness to that. Apparent. That's what it. That's what the trailer said. So I'm kind of like, uh, okay. oh, I must have missed that. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Oh, okay. I thought it, uh, what I thought, and this, I mean, once again, you know, <laughs> we we always make better ideas. We always make better movies in our head. I thought that was like a person from the future or something like that, and. You know, she's a person. She has a right mind and everything. But like, you know, her arms and legs or whatever, you know, like they had a, they gave her they gave her Terminator parts. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just so she doesn't you know, so she's not handicapped or whatever the case. May be. You know, so she could kind of fight the Terminators, even though she's really just a person, you know. But I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, she can't get you know burned or, you know, you know, but there's a the part where like the new Terminator uh, like throws something and she uses her like forearms to dodge and like her skin gets scraped off, but then you see fucking metal under it. So like you know like maybe the you know she has you know metal forearms you know and, and it's gonna hurt and she's gonna have to heal, but you know she protects herself because she has metal forearms you know metal metal bones you know she has like a Wolverine type of thing going on. Um. So I like you know I'm excited. I, I you know Tim Miller and James Cameron. You know, I don't think they're going to disappoint. I'm not, I don't think this is going to be just another payday. You know, Linda Hamilton's back, you know, Arnold, Arnold's back. But then again, Arnold was like in all these movies. Um, so, uh, you know, like, I'm not super duper excited, but I think, you know, it looks interesting. And, you know, and the fact that it, the fact that they kind of just threw away the other movies, you know, and it's funny, like all these, all these movies series are doing that. Like they did that with Halloween. I think they're going to do that with Transformers. With like Bumblebee was sort of like a reboot. Um, what was the other one? It was one other like big series that they kind of did that with. I don't know. Um, okay, a few more things. Uh, Rick and Morty season four coming in November. Mm-hmm. Um, if you follow them on social media, they are way ahead of schedule because their contract was to put out seventy episodes. Um, not Comedy Central, excuse me, Cartoon Network. Uh, Cartoon Network, the, the, if I understand, and, 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 you know, once again, I could be, have this whole story wrong. Cartoon Network, they can choose how and when they release these episodes. If they want to do a 10 season episode, uh, you know, 10, excuse me, 10 episode season. If they want to do a 14 episode season, whatever the case may be, uh, Rick and Morty, the, the writers, they're ahead of schedule. I think like they're animating the episodes now. Um, I think they went with the safe bet and said November, which makes sense. And, uh, you know, right around, you know, you know, you get new TV shows around September, October and stuff like that. So November, you, like when all the newer, newer shows are starting to kind of like die down, they can kind of come in. Uh, but I like the fact that they're ahead of schedule. Maybe they'll sneak in an episode. You know, they'll probably I'm, I'm hoping that they'll sneak an episode sometime on, on, on you know, cart, you know, Adult Swim or, you know, or something like that. Um, but once again, you know, we got literally another seven years of, of Rick and Morty ahead of us. Um, okay. Uh, Stranger Things 3 is coming to Netflix soon. They're bringing back New Coke. Yes, which, they are. Which, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's I, I, I'm sort of like, you know, I, 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 Stranger Things, in my opinion, should have come out last last year. I know they want to release it this year, right around the Fourth of July. So, because and this season of Stranger Things, it's around their Fourth of July. Um, you know, they want it to be a summer series when, like, the first, like, the first series, the first season was around Christmas. I mean, or it was around Halloween, and they released the season around Halloween. So now this one's around Fourth of July. But I think since there was that big lull of last year, like, like I'm excited for Stranger Things, but it's sort of I lost a bit of my excitement. You know, and it, like I hope it's good because season two kind of 
it dipped in quality a little bit. So, you know, I want, I want them to be good, God damn it. Um, okay. A few I, more things, a few yeah, more things. A few more things, yeah. Uh, I don't, has, <laughs> has, has, has Endgame beat Avatar yet? Or not? Um, actually, there's an article that says that it's 100 million away from Avatar. So it's no, it's not going to beat it, probably. Gosh, I mean, fucking, and look, you know, Avatar sucked. I mean, I, I want Endgame to be number one on that fucking list. Uh, I did not like Avatar, you know. And once again, talking about James Cameron, um, when Endgame beat Titanic, you know, he was he was uh, pleasant enough to release like a, a press release where like it was like, you know, the Avengers A was sinking the Titanic. Um, you know, that was cute. You know, it's just I, like I don't, I don't, I don't like Avatar, and I I, I want and I, you know, being a Marvel fanboy, I want Endgame to, uh, I want Endgame to fucking dethrone it uh of course you do <laughs> they're doing a watchman series for hbo mm. yeah i'm a know. little kind of like mm. it's supposed to be like mm. it it's, has nothing not that it has nothing to do with the movie it's supposed to be from what i said it's it's related to the comic and i guess if you saw the movie i mean you kind of understand but i mean they did change the ending of the movie that doesn't it doesn't match the comic but it's supposed to be the world of the watchman you know like if the watchman happened in 85 you know this would be you know 10 years later this is you know this is 1995 or you know it's 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 years later after the original watchmen where the world you know once again and and the whole thing that kills me is that they're trying they're they're also doing this in the comics where it's the world after the watchmen so these the comic isn't going to match them the tv show and they're kind of doing their own thing and it's damon lindelof who did lost and i liked lost but i i, I you know i'm not getting the greatest fucking feeling about this show um, you know, they, and it's like, they, you know, they wanted to hook the nerds in like right before all the, before you guys cancel well, your subscriptions wonder... after a game of Thrones, <laughs> don't forget, we're going to have fucking Watchmen here in a month or two or whatever. So I wonder if they're going to like try to tie that with uh DC somehow. I mean, it is a DC. I mean, oh, I see what you're saying. Like with the, with like the current. Universe. Yeah. Cause if you remember like the comic that they put out and I don't even know if they, they brought those out. Cause I remember like they were, um, this was years later. They were, uh. Yelling at Superman because he did something stupid, and uh, like all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here's Rawshank in a in a jail cell, and then he walks out of the jail. Oh yeah, that was that was that's the Doomsday Clock. That's that's the one I'm I'm talking about now. Is that like yeah. they they and the whole thing is the, the newest issue came out on Wednesday, which I bought. I haven't had a chance to read yet though, um, it just because I bought it and then I'm like I'm gonna go home and read it, and I went home and fucking fell asleep. Um, so uh, they. You know, they they do kind of, but now in, in that story, just keep in mind, it is, these are two separate universes. It's, you know, it's, they're, they're not, it's not the same universe. So I don't know if they're going to connect them. I mean, but then again, it's again, the movie's not following the TV show. I mean, the comic book's not following the TV show and the TV show's not following the comic book. So it, maybe they can, you know, uh, have some sort of weird, funky crossover. Um, once again, you know, I mean, um, it doesn't, I saw the trailer and I'm not, I'm not digging it. I'm not digging it at all. All right, and our last story, Paul, and mm-hmm. this is and this is one uh, that I think we could talk about for a minute. And it was officially announced today, as they're recording this, and the rumor's been going on for the past couple of months. Robert Pattinson yeah, has now been officially announced <sighs> as the Batman. I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think he's a bad actor. He did some bad fucking movies, and and and. You know, take that I, away from, you know, he did, he was in, he was in like one of the Harry Potter movies. He was okay in that. He I mean, would, he was in this movie called Transmetropolitan, uh, which I liked. And I actually, well, I started reading the book. I didn't finish it, but you know, I, I saw the movie. Of course, the, the movie had nothing to do with the fucking book, but I mean, he was okay in that. So, you know, Bruce Wayne is a handsome, rich playboy. I mean, I don't, you know, obviously he's rich as an actor, but you know, I could see him being like, putting on that bullshit playboy charm you know it's good that we're getting a younger fucking uh you know i mean i look and don't get me wrong i love ben affleck i i, I wanted ben affleck i want the ben affleck to be the batman for the like for you know the next 10 years you know let i want them to do what marvel's doing and have 10 years worth of movies and let him be batman you know not that he has to be batman in every movie as in now the movie doesn't have to be a batman but like kind of like what he did in suicide squad he's in a movie for fucking five minutes you know and, you know, have him be five minutes in, you know, the next Suicide Squad movie or five minutes in the next, uh, you know, Shazam movie, you know, have, right. him, have him be 
you know, because and once again, I see that's what sucks is that as much as I love Ben Affleck, he's an older fucking dude and he's got his issues and he's a fucking alcoholic and he's in and out of rehab. You know, at least Robert Pattinson, he's young and and to the best of my knowledge, he's not throwing his fucking life away. So, you know, like Christian Bale, you know, Christian Bale and, and once I'm not the biggest fan of Batman Begins and I'm not the biggest fan of fucking Dark Knight Rises, but at least he gave us three solid Batman. So maybe Robert Pattinson, you know, look, we, we all shrugged our fucking shoulders when we heard Heath Ledger was going to be the fucking Joker. We all, sh- I mean, back in the day, people sh- really shrugged their shoulders when fucking, you know, they said Michael Keaton was going to be fucking Batman. You know, yeah, Mr. Mom, you know, the guy fucking Beetlejuice, you know, but I'm willing to give, and plus like Matt Reeves, and the guy who's directing the movie, Matt Reeves, the guy who gave us the fucking, uh, uh, the, the new, Planet of the Apes trilogy, I, you know, and those movies were good. I don't think he's gonna fuck this up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that I don't see this as a cash grab. Like he did those. I he went into those Planet of the Apes movies. I I, I think he's was uh, totally my speculation. I think he's planning for this to at least be a trilogy. You know, that's that he, what they keep saying. He he went into those Planet of the Apes movies where had they made the first one and left it alone, that would have been another drop in the fucking bucket. Okay, Planet of the Apes. But he left it open enough, and he it, it was done well enough where it gave us two more decent sequels. That being said, I think, you know, it, once again, it's not like they're hiring fucking Joe Blow off the fucking street. It's not like, you know, like when Star Wars hired, fucking <laughs> hired Ryan Johnson, who did one fucking movie before, or two movies before uh, giving him the fucking keys to fucking the Star Wars Empire. You know, Matt Reeves is a guy with at least a halfway decent fucking track record. And so I think he's, you know... I. I'm going to give Robert Pattinson a fucking pass on this. And yes, I hated those stupid Twilight movies. They're fucking stupid. But it's not his fault they're stupid. <laughs> you know? It's a paycheck. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll give... Here's the thing. I'll give it a chance, but... Mm-hmm. I'm not, like... I'm not betting that this movie is going to do really well. No, um, of as long course. As, and I hope they don't do some stupid shit where... They're like, oh, let's let's go for a cash grab. And let's get, her, let's get what's her name so she can... Be his Bella to this, and you know bullshit. No, but so okay. If I see that, I may end up like shooting somebody in the face. Now, of course, let's let's speculate here for a second. And here's one thing I know you're gonna fucking agree with, and of course the fans have been talking about it. What if? What if? What if this is Batman Beyond? What if we I get mean, we get Michael Keaton? Oh, if you got Michael Keaton, you have me already. to be old man Bruce Wayne. He's, he look. He fucking gave us a powerful ass performance in the uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Homecoming, Spider Man Homecoming. So he can play the fucking over the hill, bitter, angry. I mean, he's played Batman, and you know, and 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 uh, you know, Robert Pattinson. Okay, fine. He's a little too old to be playing a fucking teenager now. But you know, I mean, okay, let's push it back. Okay, there's maybe a guy in his twenties now or late twenty. You know, where he's. You know, he's, a, he's or a, maybe a, you do like a flashback well, where like you you have him like in the beginning of the movie. Oh, so so he's so so oh so you have like by the time you're saying this would be like him already established as Batman, right? Yeah. And then so I mean, if they if they did it that way, then yeah, I'm I'm I'm. See now, Terry, now, now all of a sudden Terry, you don't mind. <laughs> that's Terry McGinnis. Yeah, I think he would make a great Terry McGinnis. But mm-hmm. if we're talking Bruce Wayne, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Again, that's total. I mean, we'll yeah, see. The whole half, the whole second half of this episode is all then just me just bullshitting and speculating. But, um, you know, I think if they did that, because then you can tie, you can tie the first Burton movies with this, you know, because then you have Michael Keaton and, 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 and they, they kind of tied even the, the Ben Affleck Bruce Wayne. Because there's that throwaway line where uh, Alfred goes, it's better than exploding penguins, which was, you know, a reference to, you know, uh, Batman Returns. So, you know, you could kind of connect these movies. Like, because once again, if it's in the future, everything that has happened has happened, you know, and they can give us, you know, a whole new fucking universe. And, and you know, uh, so there's no Batman burnout because, you know, they oh, there's a new Batman every fucking two years or whatever. OK, fine. Well, this is well, this is a literally brand new Batman. This is a Batman that is no cinematic, um, you know, and if they're testing the waters with giving us, you know, even, you know, a couple, you know, with Suicide Squad, they're testing the waters of giving us a Harley Quinn or giving us a fucking Aquaman movie or giving <laughs> us a fucking Shazam movie. Um, 
I think you can go. And the whole thing is that you can have this universe with you can have this universe and it won't interfere with the other. You know, if, if they really wanted to, you know, you know, let's just say they keep going with the expanded universe and they go with Aquaman 2 and they go with uh, the Birds of Prey movie and they go with Shazam 2. Um you know, and they keep the, you know, or the Black Adam movie or whatever, you know, they can keep that continuity. And then this is the future. So this has this will not interfere with those movies at all. Yeah. You know, it won't fuck with the universe because if you have a new Batman, because all of these characters right now are involved, you know, Ben Affleck is the Batman in that universe. Because right. even in Shazam, and this is, this is kind of a spoiler, you know, Superman shows up at the end of Shazam. You know, so and it's, you know, I mean, of course, it's not you don't see his face, but it's supposed to be the Henry Cavill Superman. And as you know, the Superman from Justice League and <laughs> Dawn of Justice. And so in, in that particular universe, Batman is Ben Affleck. So you can just say in the future, OK, look, Ben Affleck. Hey, look, in, in 30 years, Ben Affleck's going to look back like <laughs> Michael Keaton. And he looked like Michael Keaton 30 years ago. And he looked like Michael Keaton again, you know, because, you know, as in if they connected it to the Tim Burton earlier movies, you know, with Exploding Penguins. Um, you know, and then you can have, uh, Robert Pattinson be, you know, the pretty boy, you know, once again, not college, not high school aged because things are different, but you know, you can make them you know, early twenties and stuff like that. There's still, you know, that angst and, and, and stuff like that, you know, the history repeats itself. So you can have, you know, and talk about technology and Instagram and you know, how, you know, shit controls our lives and Alexa and Facebook and you know, Google monitoring everything we do. You know, you can play with all those fucking uh, storylines with technology and have it be Batman Beyond. That's just my pitch, and I could be wrong. <laughs> all right. So, do you have anything else before we wrap this up? No, I think we should wrap it up. Right. That's, That's what, what she, she said. said. All right. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast dot net. We can find all things show related. You can find links to our iTunes page, or if you have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can download it there. Subscribe. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can find us on. Uh, the Stitcher app, that's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Uh, that's how I listen to all my podcasts. I put them to listen later and available offline. So I can download them on a Wi-Fi spot. When I'm out and about running my chores, I can listen to my podcast that way. And, of course... Keyword, listen to his... Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, the series of podcasts that I listen to. Uh, one of them being, you know, Paul's other baby, the Tanami Faithful Podcast, is also you available. You fucking listening or I'll kill you. On Stitcher. <laughs> um... Or you can go to our actual hosting site, which is SoundCloud.com. Uh, just search for uh, the SoundCloud app, SoundCloud.com. Search for Two Strangers Podcast. I do make all the avail- all the episodes available for download. I don't know what the deal is with it comes to downloading them on a, off a off of a phone, but once again, you can stream it from your you can stream it to your phone. Uh, you can write us uh, as Oscar does all the time at Two Strangers One Podcast at Gmail dot com. Uh, you know, write in and say, say Oscar. He said, "Say Oscar, you're an asshole." And Oscar, you, you you know, you think you're a tough guy, but you're singing fucking Madonna. Uh, <laughs> you could write that in at uh, Two Strangers One Podcast at Gmail dot com. Uh, we want your money. We need your money. And I still haven't set up a Patreon yet. But Any dropping things? Yeah, yes. I'm dropping. I'm dropping my mouse. Um, we want your money. We need your money. But until we do that. Uh, you can uh, just share and like our page on Facebook, facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast, all spelled out. Uh, once again, it takes two seconds to like this episode, it takes two seconds to subscribe, to like, share on your page, um, you know, get the word out. Uh, every little bit helps. The more eyes on the, on the, and, and once again, our last episode, we had a good sharing of people listen to them. So hopefully we can keep that ball rolling and, uh, you know, keep those numbers up. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com. Uh, slash uh, Stranger Podcast. Um, and then you could also, uh, for the episodes that you won't find on SoundCloud, you can go back and listen to six, seven years worth of the podcast on YouTube. Just go on YouTube, search for Two Strangers on Pod, Two Strangers on Podcast. You can find uh, old episodes. You can find my Stranger Vlogs, um, a bunch of other show related things. And uh, that's it. I acquiesce the floor to you, sir. All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Piscrillo. You can email me, Paul Piscrillo, at TunamiFaithful.com. And, um, yeah, that's about it, pretty much. All right. Well, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping. And running from Chris. (laughs) Especially when he does that. (laughs) All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want, you Double there? jackpot. What is it? 
It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I know. Oh, fucking. Are you sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball, both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. $5 is yeah. insanely inexpensive. 15 is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come, I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I all. know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you.